الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه المنتجبين وعلى جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وسارعوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة عرضها السماوات والأرض أعدت للمتقين صدق الله العلي العظيم In the name of Allah most gracious most merciful All praise is due to our creator, our cherisher, our nourisher and our sustainer We bear witness there is none worthy of worship but Allah we bear witness, we believe in all the Prophets who came throughout history. And we bear witness that Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, is the final of all the emissaries of Allah. Prophet elders, Hufal, Aimma, educators, learners, parents, elders, brothers and sisters, respected youth. I greet you with the Islamic universal greeting of peace. May the peace, the mercy, and the blessings of Allah be upon each and every one in this auspicious hour of Jum'ah, ah, in this holy month of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Here we are on the first Friday of the month of Ramadan, the month of Qiyam, the month of Quran, the month of Siyam. The month of fasting. It's indeed an exercise in pursuit of divine blessings. It's an aim at attaining divine forgiveness. It's an attempt at manifesting the best of ethical values and inculcating higher moral principles. A month of high intensity spiritual enhancement and of a concerted effort for character development. A month in pursuance of taqwa, that true criterion of human excellence, that standard of greatness in the estimation and in the evaluation of Allah. In akramakum inda Allah atqaakum, the most honorable among human beings in the evaluation, estimation of Allah are those with the most and the highest degree of taqwa. And the pursuit of taqwa, that standard of moral excellence, the pursuit of taqwa is exactly the primary objective of our fasting in the month of Ramadan. Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O oh, you who proclaim faith, O oh, you who believe, Fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed to those before you in order that you may attain taqwa, that you may attain Allah consciousness, that you may attain righteousness. Fasting is an obligated prescription and it has been enjoined throughout history by prophets, by all prophets. In every age, by every prophet that has come, and all of them came to reform and to improve human patterns of behavior. The fast of Ramadan is one of the greatest means of inculcating self-discipline. We have seen societies that are forcefully disciplined by authoritarian rule. Positively or negatively, but they are disciplined. Do that, you cannot do that, but that is by means of an authoritarian rule. This fasting is not like that. The one by authoritarian rule is a discipline imposed by a political authority. But in the case of the fasting person, this is of the greatest of all disciplines in which we impose on ourselves by observing the obligations of fasting during the month of Ramadan. Sayyidina Ali, Karim Allah Wajah said, whosoever wishes to have a positive impact on the world. 
qabla ta'alimi ghayri. Let that person begin with disciplining, educating, guiding, morally improving the self rather than attempting to discipline the world. Ramadan is an institution by means of which each fasting person practically improves the world. And you do it individually by yourself through refining yourself. If the whole world doesn't change, at least I should be a better person at least. The Quran was revealed in this month. It was revealed as a reminder. And Allah says, The Quran was revealed in this month. It was revealed on the night of power. The Quran was revealed in this month. And as a result, Muslim pay extraordinary attention to the Quran in Ramadan. In fact, we perform extended prayer, qiyam, nightly prayer, for the increased remembrance of Allah who revealed the Quran. And as we know that salah which we perform, it is also dhikr. In the sal salah we read the Quran, which is also dhikr. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikr, we've revealed the dhikr which is the Quran, and aqimi salata li dhikri, we perform the salah for the remembrance of Allah. So we engage in a continuous form of conscious contemplation and reflection and gratitude and remembrance of the Almighty. So it provides this qiyam that you do at night, combines the two key elements of Ramadan, ibadah, engaging in the worship of Allah, the revealer of the Quran, and we engage the word of Allah himself, the Quran. And during the day, we abstain from some of the basic fundamental necessities of life, food and drink, thereby we get hunger and thirst somewhat. But in the process, we gain spiritual awareness, a spiritual awareness that helps us transcend the needs of the body and the wants of the flesh. Mastering our appetites rather than becoming enslaved to our greed, need and to our appetites. Emptying the stomach but filling the soul. Helping us to remember the fact that our bodies are temporary but our souls are beyond worldly. By adopting a little voluntary inconvenience of fasting, we allow ourselves to feel a tiny bit of the hunger that so many in the world are enduring on a daily basis. We fast till iftar, for so many in the world, iftar rarely comes. And if it does come, it does not come every day. And that is true for almost half the world. This awareness evokes and generates within us a sense of civic responsibility and therefore it engenders a greater sense, an increased sense of generosity. We try to spend Ramadan in doing all the good we can, finding ways of doing the best deeds and trying to be the best that we can be. The Prophet Abdullah ibn Umar an, narrates أن رجلا جاء إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله أي الناس أحب إلى الله وأي الأعمال أحب إلى الله عز وجل which people are most loved to Allah and which deeds are most loved to Allah and for those of us who are fasting it's and being generous and contributing to the welfare of others this should evoke our conscience the Rasul said أحب الناس إلى الله أنفعهم للناس the best of people are those who are best to humanity. And وَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُرُورُ تُدْخِلُهُ عَلَى مُسْلِمٍ أَوْ تَكْشِفُ عَنْهُ كُرْبَةً أَوْ تَطْرُدُ عَنْهُ جُوعًا أَوْ تَقْضِي عَنْهُ دَيْنًا Rasulullah said, the most loved person to Allah is the one most beneficial to others. And the best of these are those that gladden the heart of others. Remove the hunger of the hungry to lighten the sorrow of those who are sad, to remove the hurt of those who may have been wronged or injured, and to relieve those who may be burdened by debt. You see, this is living. That your life is not only about what you do for yourself, but how through yourself, you become an agent of Allah's goodness. Remember the Hadith Qudsi, where the Rasul is, it was inspired to say, Allah will ask on the day of Qiyamah, I was hungry and you didn't feed me. He said, oh Allah, how can we feed you? You are self-sufficient. 
And Allah will respond, don't you know so and so was hungry, so and so was in need. Had you helped him, you would have found me with him. So Allah being self-sufficient, but we mustn't be dead to the world. We will be awakened to the realities around us. Our fasting can't only make us aware of our personal, physical and spiritual responsibilities without being cognizant of our social and civic responsibilities. Imam al-Shafi put it very beautifully, he said, النَّاسِ مَا بَيْنَ الْوَرَىٰ رَجُلًا تَقْضِي عَلَىٰ يَدِ النَّاسِ حَاجَاتِ قَدْ مَاتَ قَوْمٌ وَمَا مَاتَتْ مُكَارِمُهُمْ مَكَارِمُهُمْ وَعَاشَ قَوْمٌ وَهُمْ فِي النَّاسِ أَمْوَابِ He says the best of people among people are those who are generous, who prevent people from having to beg to meet their needs. And then he says, there are so many people who may have died, who may have moved on, but they live on because of the honorability and the generosity. And so many people are walking around useless to anybody as if they are dead. There are those who are dead, who have passed on, but their generosity and goodness continues to help. And there are those who are alive, whose presence does not make a difference to those in need. We have been blessed to witness in another month of Ramadan. A month of seeking forgiveness, of focusing on the pursuance of taqwa, a month of increased generosity, of controlling our negative urges and our negative emotions, and of heightening our capacity to improve ourselves. And all of these pursuits I've mentioned are captured in the verse of the Holy Quran. Allah says in Surah Al Imran, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And strive with one another to attain to the forgiveness of your sustainer, to your provider, and to a paradise which is as vast as the heavens and the earth, which has been prepared for those who aspire towards taqwa. Those doers of good, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَلِ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Those doers of good who spend charitably in times of plenty and in times of difficulty. Those who control their emotions, those who pardon and forgive their fellow human beings. Surely Allah loves such doers of good. May Allah make us to be among them. Now if the fasting person, as the Quran indicates, التائبون, العابدون, الحامدون, السائحون, one of the descriptions the ulama say of the people who are fasting, one of the names and titles, السائحون, those who are on a spiritual journey, and a journey implies you leave a place for another place. You must be moving to make a journey. If the fasting person is on a spiritual journey, then why is it that so many of us remain the same in spite of going through Ramadan after Ramadan? While we know that the one who has truly benefited from fasting is the one who actually comes out of Ramadan better than he went into Ramadan. Do not let our fast and our prayer of Ramadan be a mere ritual, hollow in performance, devoid of blessing. As the Rasul warned, as documented, by Ibn Majah in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah, Rubba Sa'im laysa lahu min siyami illa al-ju' wa rubba qa'im laysa lahu min qiyami illa al-sa'im. Perchance the fasting person attains nothing by the fast except hunger, and perchance the one who stands in prayer at night may achieve nothing by it except tiredness. May Allah protect us from such fasting and such prayer. Do we not realize that Ramadan is a training ground for the conscientization of a human being and for those of us who think we are conscious more specifically for us it is a spiritual academy Ramadan is a spiritual academy for human self-development self-regulation and self-improvement otherwise it's not only the abstention of food and drink there are other elements of ethical and moral implications that are required of us to be implemented. Whoever doesn't give up false statements, talking false things or telling lies, evil deeds, speaking bad words, saying negative things, Allah sees no need why that person is not eating and drinking. He may as well eat and drink. Allah sees no need why a person who continues telling lies, continuing making fitna or so and so forth, or saying bad words, Allah sees no reason why did he stop eating. Why? Why did he stop eating? 
It's not to say that you can eat, it's to make you conscious that I should not, my fasting become almost null and void if I do this. So Ramadan is an opportunity for growth, a prospect for moral progress and for spiritual advancement. It's an ideal period for personal transformation. We need to journey morally and spiritually, individually and socially. We need to improve theoretically and practically. Not focusing so much as some of us do on the amount of prayer, but rather on the quantity and the quality, rather than the quality, rather than the quantity of prayer. I repeat, not focusing so much on the quantity of prayer, but rather on the quality of our prayer. Not how far we have gone into reading the Quran, but how far has the Quran reached within us. Not on how many sunnas we have done, mashallah, do as many as you can, but rather how much of the prophetic characteristics have we imbibed. Not so much of how much dhikr, mashallah, we repeat on the tongue and please do so, but more on how much Allah is remembered in the process, in the heart. Not so much Allah being mentioned on the tongue, please do so. Keep your tongue moist with the remembrance of Allah. But more important than that is how is Allah remembered in the heart. Not how well we recited the Quran in prayer, but how well we have reflected the Quranic values in our character, in our behavior. Not so much on mere abstention from food and drink, as much as it is a period for a catalyst for transformation. Not focusing on how hungry you personally feel until iftar, but how you evoke your civic responsibility, realizing for many people, there is no iftar every day. Yes, we have abstained from the impulse of eating and drink drinking, but we need to graduate to refrain from greed and gluttony and self selfishness. Yes, we have avoided sinful and wrongful actions to the best of our ability, but now we need to graduate to the avoidance of evil and corruption. Yes, we have increased our prayers in the solitude of the night when nobody can see us. Now we need to increase our ability to do things not for show. Yes, we have multiplied asking Allah for forgiveness. We ought now to graduate to increase in forgiving those around us, the creation of the Creator. Yes, we have enhanced our individual generosity. And this is where I really need us to reflect on this. There's so much generous generosity displayed by Muslims in Ramadan, which is excellent. So many organizations, so many institutions doing such great work. May Allah reward each and every one of them. Each and every one who distributes, who collects, who contributes and who benefits. May Allah reward each and every one of them. But if you noticed, we feed the poor and next year we feed the same poor and their children. And the following year we feed the same poor and their children and their grandchildren. We have advanced our individual generosity to help feed the poor. It is high time that we graduate to a collective commitment for the eradication of poverty. We have not eradicated poverty. Sometimes we perpetuate it by mere handouts rather than empowerment of people institutions and organizations must come together and think of ways how we can though get, make those who are receiving zakah be inshallah payers of zakah so they can benefit other people rather than keeping them in perpetual poverty and feeling good that we are giving our charity to them good to give please continue giving but there needs to be some change in what we are doing because we are not eradicating poverty we are only feeding the poor which is good but it's a temporary measure. So we have enhanced our individual generosity to help to feed the poor. It is high time that you graduate to a collective commitment as an ummah for the eradication of poverty. We have been attending the school of fasting through this month of Ramadan, Ramadan upon Ramadan, at the institution of Ramadan for years now. We're trying to pursue taqwa. But are we moving from self-centeredness to social consciousness? Are we moving from self-righteousness towards righteousness? What we're asking is, are we indeed graduating from being a Muslim to being a mu'min? Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.
Islamic City will continue its mission to cultivate peace, inspire action, explore positive solutions, and encourage purposeful living through the universal teachings of Islam. Please, donate now.